name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. CBS brings you Jeff Regan, Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's story, A Streetcar Named Schultz. It was two out of three falls, one hour time limit. Me and a bunch of muscle-bound wrestlers and a scared blonde. You didn't be, have to be an expert to know the difference between a broken toenail and a stranglehold. It began in the office of my boss, Anthony J. Lyon. He called me in to meet a new client. Young guy, handsome, muscular, about 27 or 8, dressed in a... I did a take. He was dressed in a black cutaway coat, striped trousers, gray vest, and silk ascot. Without a program, you couldn't tell it from a wedding or a funeral. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, come in. I want you to meet our new client, the Earl of Gardner. Hiya. How'd you do? Uh, Jeffrey, our client, the Earl, has quite a problem. Oh. Jolted at the church? Uh, no, no, of course not. This is serious, Jeffrey, very serious. The Earl is a famous wrestler. Surely you've heard of him. No television set. Uh, yes. Well, uh, perhaps I'll let the Earl tell you his own story. Oh, I think that would be advisable, gentlemen. Okay by me. Start from the top. Well, last evening, Mr. Regan, I was engaged in a match with a chap who called himself the Atomic Assassin. It was two out of three falls, one hour time limit. Naturally, I won. Naturally? Shortly after the completion of the match, the Atomic Assassin suffered a, a stomach disorder. I'm not certain of the uh, technical name for it. Well, we can skip that. The Atomic Assassin is no longer with us. He retired? He's dead. It was in the papers. The police have discovered poison in a post-mortem completed only a few hours ago. They suspected me of uh, murder. That part wasn't in the papers. Oh, we must help our client, Jeffrey. He's given us a retainer of $100. Uh, you understand, Jeffrey, our client is innocent. Oh, sure. Yes, uh, go on. Uh. Well, the police are annoying me with their insinuations. The State Athletic Commission is being downright rude. I will not put up with this any longer. Do I uh, make myself clear? We find out who killed the atomic assassin and you sidestep a murder rap. Precisely. What do you know about the other guy, the assassinated Adam? Uh, nothing. Oh, that's no help. Well, he's a crude fellow, ill-mannered, dubious family background. Look, you want a murder solved or a family history? Just a moment, sir. Uh, Jeffrey, our client... Drop the vaudeville, Earl. Murder isn't show business. Give me some facts, and fast. Okay. Okay, I tell you, I don't know anything about it. Well, that's better. At least I don't have to cut the accent with a knife. A hundred bucks is a lot of money to me, Regan. I want answers, and I want them now. I don't like the smell of gas. Well, that's normal. Hey, Jeffrey, you are going to help the Earl. Yeah, I'll help him. Just one thing, Fatso. Hey, yes, Jeffrey? He's the wrestler. He takes the falls. <laughs> All I got out of the Earl was that he trained at Mike Turner's gym downtown. Mike was also the guy who promoted the fatal match, so I headed there. Twenty minutes later, I'd pushed my way through jammed-up L.A. traffic and walked up two flights of stairs to Turner's gymnasium. It was packed with big muscles and cauliflower ears, the smell of liniment and the smell of sweat-stained leather. Somewhere behind the massive biceps, a little man came toward me. He was mopping his brow, trying to shake off the heat of the clammy room. Uh, hi. Hi, I want to work out? Looking for Mike. For why? For reasons. Whose reasons? My reasons. Okay. So I'm Mike. The name's Regan. Lion Detective Bureau. Ah, uh, the lights are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, promoted the match last night? Ah, <sighs> what match? The Earl of Gardner versus the Atomic Assassin. Oh, oh, that match. What can you give me on it? What did I get? Trouble. Please, Regan, let a guy live and forget, huh? What about the assassin? Truck driver. I picked him up. Named Jay Morley. No family, nothing. Just a guy. Enemies? No, no, no. Nobody knew him around here. He just started in the business a month ago. Came from Toledo, I think. Let's try the Earl of Gardner. Schultz? Oh, that's different. Meaning what? Enemies. Enemies all over the place. Nobody likes him, but nobody. His name's Schultz? Yeah, Stanley Schultz. I gave him the title Earl of Gardner. Good, huh? <laughs> he kind of fit. He used to be an actor. Then a streetcar conductor. He needed the dough, so I picked him up. He draws a crowd. 
Two guys wrestle, one of them turns up dead. It's too simple. There's more somewhere. Yeah, there's always more. Uh, listen, maybe a workout will help you, huh? I'll get you some trucks. Uh, some other time. Okay. Take a look around, Regan. The joint is yours. I got work to do. Big match coming up tonight. The little man walked off, mopping his brow. I decided to take his advice, look around. I watched a barrel-chested guy in black tights grapple with a heavy-bearded character in a turban, both practicing groans. Near the wall, a big guy, big even in that place, stood raising and lowering a 200-pound barbell. I walked over. His big arms flexed as the black weights went up and down. But his breathing was easy. There was something about the guy you couldn't help notice. His hair. It hung down his back almost to his trunks in two long braids. I had turned my back to him. That was a mistake. Hey, Regan, look out! I stepped aside in time. In time to miss the 200 pounds of solid iron that fell from the big guy's uplifted hands. Fell and crashed six inches from my head. Regan. Regan, you okay? Sure, sure, Turner. I feel great. King, come here. You want me, Turner? Yeah, King, I want you. What's the idea letting that barbell slip like that? You could have killed Regan. Regan. Go on, go on. Tell him you're sorry. Sorry. Save the tears. What'd you say? He, he didn't understand you, Regan. Yeah, but I understood him, and I don't like the joke. Now, he's okay, Regan. Okay. Sure, you're okay. You just happened to drop 200 pounds of cast iron when my back was turned. Now, you're look, okay. Regan, it's no use in getting sore about it. King didn't mean it. Now, go on. Go on, King. Get back to work. Work? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> he's just a big, dumb stoop, Regan. He didn't mean nothing. What's his name? Harry Walsh. He calls himself King Cobra. He fixes up those braids when he goes into the ring. They look like snakes. He draws a crowd. Yeah, so would my funeral, Turner. Only the gate receipts wouldn't do me any good. Why well, not? Now, it's no use being sore, Regan. The king's a little over-anxious, that's all. Got a big match tonight. Who with? The Earl of God. What? Well, say that. That's right. You were asking about the Earl. Yeah, him and the king are set for the feature go tonight. Should be the match of the year. How do you get that? Oh, didn't I tell you? They hate each other like poison. <laughs> House is sold out. Should be nothing short of murder. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Turner. Maybe that's an idea. I headed out the door. It made sense I couldn't lose anything having a talk with the cops. King Cobra weighed in at better than 300 pounds. And it made more sense I wasn't going to continue the argument with him. It was late afternoon, half-empty streets... I was heading toward my car when I picked up the footsteps. High heels, walking fast to keep up with me. I slowed, they slowed. I picked up the pace, so did the high heels. Somebody had to end it. Oh, wait. You wanted something? Oh, you're... you're a detective, Mr. Regan, and I need your help. Name? Jean Turner, Mike Turner's wife. I... Well, I, well, I saw you talking to Mike back there in the gym. So you followed me? Oh, please... Couldn't we talk somewhere? Sure thing, lady. Come on. Right. It was a combination bar and cafe. Baffo's, the sign said. I opened the door, place empty, and the girl walked on in. She was maybe 5'4", blonde, young, good-looking. Seemed straight on nylons on nice legs. She turned, looked deep into my eyes... Turned away, scared. I, I, I've changed my mind. It, it really wasn't important. Let me decide. But... Back booth. Oh, all right. Hiya, patrons. Can I help you? No, thanks. We'll take the back one. The back booth? You won't like it. Yeah? No television. The only booth in the house where you can't see the television, patron. We'll suffer. You don't like television? You're nuts. Everybody likes television. It's here to stay. Sure. Okay, only you're going to miss time for Beanie. Okay, okay, be a reactionary. It's your life. It's on your mind, Mrs. Turner. Jean, please, Mr. Regan. Okay, Jean? Well, it's about the wrestling match. Well, that's a good start. Well, I'm terribly worried. Something horrible is going to happen. It already did. The atomic assassin's dead, you remember? Oh, oh, that match. Oh, that's what your husband said. Makes sense, will you? But... Mr. Regan, I'm talking about the match tonight. King Cobra is wrestling with the Earl of Gardner. King Cobra? Well, what's that got to do with the murder of the guy last night? Well, I don't know. Maybe it has nothing to do with it, but... Oh, but, Mr. Regan, if you don't do something, there's going to be another murder. I'm sure of it. Now... 
So you don't like television, huh? Maybe you'd like to hear what happened to me with television? Here, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Regan, I'll, I'll be right back. Hmm. What's wrong with her? I didn't ask. You should have. She got tears in her eyes. Oh, well, where was I? About television and me. Yeah, now there's a story for you. Make it short. I used to be a wrestler. Baffo the Blockbuster is what they called me. And I was great. Until along comes television and they cancel me after my first match. You want to know why? I'm too pretty. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Rough. Me? Oh, well. I'm philosophical. Look what happened to thousands of silent movie actors when they brought in sound. Who am I to stand up in the way of progress? You know, that's a very good question. Yeah, and besides even my name, Baffo the Blockbuster, it's out of date. Now they got Jet Sam, Roger the Rock. Four shots from somewhere out back. Baffo and I headed that way in a hurry. Back alley empty. No traffic, nothing. Back inside, a storeroom empty. Baffo and I looked at each other. Goes on here. What else have we got back here? Nothing. What's behind the bar? Uh, storage space, washroom, telephone Tele booth. Where? Phone booth's right over the... Oh, you don't think... Look, first, then think. Oh, Wait no, here. No, no, I hope not. Oh, no. No, no, that's not true. My place. My Shut place. Shut up. Be... Jean Turner. Four holes in her back. She was right, Buffo. There was going to be a murder. Hers. A wrestler who called himself the Atomic Assassin was dead after a match with another wrestler who called himself the Earl of Gardner. That's when the Earl hired my boss, the Lion, and me to find out who done it. I met a promoter named Mike Turner and another wrestler named King Cobra. Finally, I met Turner's wife, Jean. Only our acquaintance didn't last long. She wound up in a phone booth with a lot of slugs in her back. It made sense Lieutenant Cannon of Homicide would have some comments. Hello, Regan. Have a chair. Oh, thanks. Which one's yours? The Earl of Gardner? Mm, him. You don't like my client? Made a pass at my telephone operator. I saw her. He sure. <clears throat> What's on your mind? You got anything on the Earl? I mean, real? Maybe. That's no answer. Gene Turner makes a lovely corpse, Regan. What about the atomic assassin, Candid? Two murders fit, somewhere. Sure, maybe they do. Takes time, Regan. Ah, it's a shame a guy'd kill something as nice as that Turner dame. Phew. It's a shame. Try once more. What about a wrestler named King Cobra? Uh, doesn't interest me. What about the husband, Mike Turner? Nope, Tommy? nope. Okay, I'm sorry I asked. Don't get sore, Regan. You know how these things are. It takes time. Then you're going to let the Earl wrestle tonight? Why not? Maybe he'll get himself killed. Save the taxpayers a lot of expense. Tell him for me, Regan. If King Cobra doesn't break his neck for him, maybe somebody else will. <laughs> I headed for my car outside. Candid was playing it close, all right. It gave me nothing. But I did have a wrestler who makes passes at a cop's telephone operator. My client, the Earl of Gardner, alias Schultz. About as popular as a case of measles. Chances were I'd find him at the arena checking in for the big match. I swung the car around in a hurry. I found him, all right, stretched out on a table, getting a massage. He didn't seem happy to see me. Oh, uh, Mr. Regan, I presume. Questions, pretty boy. Something troubling you, Mr. Regan? You. Not around, Will. Uh, go, go on, Mr. Regan. What makes you so popular? Me? It's ridiculous. People hate me. Why? My job, Mr. Regan. I'm a professional villain. I'm paid to have people hate me. You're taking your work home with you. Other side, Oil. Oh, okay. I, I'm listening, Mr. Regan. What about you and King Cobra? He says he's going to kill you tonight. Uh, publicity. Who's kidding who? <clears throat> Max. Huh? Max, you, you better leave. I, oh. Okay, I'll... Now listen, Regan, I like you. You're working for me. But King Cobra and I, well, 
That's business. Gate receipts. Have it your way. I think different. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Regan. Something maybe you ought to know about me. You got the floor. Oh, sure. Sure, I'm a no-good heel. Out there in front of a crowd, everybody hates me. I make more money that way. It's my living. Ever try anything else? Plenty of things. I wanted to be an actor once. Like a lot of young punks, I came to Hollywood. I didn't get anywhere, Regan. I took jobs where I could find them. I ended up as a streetcar conductor. A streetcar named Schultz. Sure, why not? My father was in show business. I know what it's like to miss meals. It isn't fun. Go on. Well, Mike Turner spotted me on that streetcar. I, well, I got a good build, and he liked me. Mike's a square shooter, Regan. He gave me the title and the promotion. I eat now. Every meal. See what you mean. Well, that's it. End of story. I eat now. Okay, Schultz. It's your business. I got business, too, to clear a murder rap and keep you out of hot water. Thanks, Regan. You know why anybody would kill the atomic assassin? No, no. Honestly, I don't. I never met him before the match last night. We shared the same dressing room. He drank some water after the match. He was poisoned. What about Jean Turner? Well, I've seen her around here. Sweet girl. I like her, Regan. Used to walk her home nights Mike was busy. That's all you can give me? That's all. Okay, Earl. You wrestle and I'll watch. But be careful. I got a hunch King Cobra and you haven't been reading the same publicity notices. It was beginning to make sense now. The Earl of Gardner, professional villain, wrestles unknown name of atomic assassin. The assassin dies, the Earl lives. No motives. Only, if you switched it around, gave the Earl the poison, you got motives all right. Motives by the dozens. Things could add now. I put in a phone call to my boss, Anthony J. Lyon. Okay, it's me, Fatso. I got a job for you. Jeffrey, what's the rush? I need an answer, and I need it within the next hour. There's a wrestler around town named King Cobra. I know, and you want me to find out if he has a record. I'm ahead of you this time, Jeffrey. Yeah, check the police on that already. Ryan, I want to know if King Cobra's married. What? Find out where he lives. Run out there. Meet the wife, if he has one. Jeffrey, are you out of your mind? It's important. Our client wrestles King Cobra tonight. Yes, so I read in the... Oh. Oh, so that's your scheme, is it? Send me out on some wild goose chase while you enjoy the wrestling matches. Probably put it on the expense account, too. You guessed it, Fatso. Jeffrey, I'm sick and tired of having you pad your expense account. Not only do you include yourself, but tonight you'll probably take some lame brain numbskull along. Lion, you're absolutely psychic. Psychic, psychic. This has got to stop. What bum are you dragging along this time? You, Fatso. Uh, you see, I... Uh, what? Well, I figured you'd like to see the matches, and that way we could both put it on the expense account. Jeffrey! What a brilliant idea. Positively brilliant. Yeah, and bring that information I need. King Cobra's wife. Uh, it's business, Fatso. Jeffrey, what on earth are you insinuating? Never mind. Get busy. You may be the difference between just another wrestling match and murder. <laughs> Things were moving now. It was after 8 o'clock by the time I finished dinner. At the box office, somebody handed me two ringside seats Mike Turner had left for me. Free. When I got in, the place was mobbed. One of the prelims had just wound up. By nine o'clock, there wasn't an empty seat in the house. Power of the press, power of the imagination. Everybody there. Everybody expecting to see something special. You could tell it from the looks on their faces, the atmosphere, the tense excitement. Everybody waiting for the big match, the Earl of Gardner versus King Cobra. Pretty soon, the lion showed up, led in by music and a big cigar. Jeffrey, I thought I'd never find you in this mob. Sit down, fat, so it won't be long. Hey, ringside seats, eh? How much did this cost the company? Passes from Mike Turner. Passes? Oh, delightful. <laughs> Think of the money we say. Never mind that. What about King Cobra? Married? Oh, you should see her, Jeffrey. Cool green eyes, red hair, dimples, everything. Legs lovely, lovely. That settles it. Hey, Jeffrey, what on earth are you driving at? Handsome noble gladiator! That magnificent specimen of humanity! That glorious champion from Dover, England! That 14 stone 10! <laughs> wearing white trunks with his family crest! His Highness the Isle of Gardner! <laughs> from the wild! Of the timberland of the northwest, 
From the rugged earth of our great nation comes that giant, that modern-day Paul Bunyan, that towering figure of humanity, at 311 pounds, wearing black trunks, King Cobra! Hey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you still didn't tell me why you wanted to know about King Cobra's wife. Later, Fat, so we came to see a match, remember? Hi, Reagan. Mind if I join you? Oh, Lion, uh, Mike Turner. Mike, my boss, Anthony J. Lyon. Well, howdy do, Mr. Howdy, Turner. howdy. It's gonna be a great fight, Regan, great fight. Yeah, but your wife couldn't make it. What? Oh. Yeah, see what you mean. Think it's funny that I'm here, huh? My wife murdered? Maybe. Why well, lie about it, Regan? Gene and I didn't get along. We were split up. She didn't love me. Let's watch the match. It was three falls, one hour time limit. The referee gave them their instructions. Brief... Simple. Don't kill each other. But from the look on the face of King Cobra, he didn't hear good. They started. The Earl, the King. I didn't have to be an expert to throw out the publicity theory. The aloof look was gone from the Earl. The crowd forgotten. Both of them tumbling, spinning, twisting, fighting. Ten minutes. First fall to the King. Twenty minutes, second fall to the Earl. Both men growing weak, tired, cut, angry, fighting. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, I don't like it. Something's wrong. Real wrong. Something should be done. Turner. Turner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you want? Are you going to stop it? What? What? Stop the match? You're crazy. They mean business. But sure, sure they do. They're good men. Great show they're putting on. That's no show, Turner. Huh? No show? You kidding? They're the greatest fakers in the world. They weren't faking the crowd sensed it, the referee sensed it. Even the cops landing the aisles moved down a little closer to the ring. Everybody knowing what was happening. Nobody making a move. It was what the crowd came to see. Something special. Fifty minutes gone, ten to go. Two beaten men. Evenly matched. The Earl, lean, fast, clever. King Cobra, massive, powerful, slow. Nobody winning, both of them losing. The referee long since just another guy watching... The lion on the edge of the seat. The crowd on its feet, screaming. Then it happened. Five minutes ago. Mike Turner got up. He hurried to the referee. They pried them apart. Turner talked to King Cobra and then to the Earl. Five minutes left. Match even. One fall each. And it looked like it was over. The crowd didn't like it. Neither did the wrestlers. And then Mike Turner signaled them to go back into the ring. And that's when I decided to move. Jeffrey, come back here! Jeffrey! I got to the ring in a hurry. The police tried to stop me. The spectators tried to stop me. The referee tried to stop me, but I got there. I got there and grabbed King Cobra. Uh, what? What you doing? Give me that. I'll kill you for this. Give me what's in your hand, King. I'll kill you for... The police. All right, men. All right, grab him. Uh, let, let go. I'll let me... evidence, Regan. Sure. Here, Candid. Okay, Regan, clear out of here before you get yourself killed. The police will handle him. Twenty policemen, Lieutenant Candon, King Cobra, and Jeff Regan left the ring. Alive. The cops led the interference, and we made our way to the dressing room. All right, King, let's have it. I do nothing. Nothing. Yet. Only a couple of minutes and... Nothing. Hey, what's the idea of stopping the match, Lieutenant? I want Regan arrested. He's got no right to, to stop... To stop a murder, Turner? Quiet, both of you. Regan was out of bounds, Turner. We can what? take care of that later. But I want an explanation as to where your wrestler got a small sack of prussic acid. Uh, prussic? Poison, Turner. Chances are the same kind that killed the atomic assassin. King Cobra palmed it. Uh, I don't know nothing about it, see? If Cobra tried to pull a stunt like that, Cobra I didn't don't... pull anything, Turner. You gave him that poison sack when you went to his corner to talk I... to him. Yeah, that's why you interrupted the fight. Gosh, that's nuts. That's right. Mike gave me sack. Okay, Turner. Talk. Look, look, you got nothing on me. You can't prove anything. You killed the atomic assassin, Turner, by mistake. I... He and Earl shared the same dressing room. You were after the Earl then, just like you were tonight. You got nothing. Nothing, do you hear? Just a bunch of lies. The Earl lies. was a nice-looking guy, Turner. Women liked him. He used to be friendly with your wife, Jean. You drew some wrong conclusion about that. That's a lie. She and him were... Finish it, Turner. 
You killed Jean to keep her from telling what a jealous maniac you were. That would have been the real tip-off. You used the same stunt with King Cobra. Told him his wife was playing around with the Earl. Got him sore. Worked him up to a real anger. Almost got him to kill for you. That's right. Mike Turner told me that. Wait. He says my wife... King, shut she... up! Never mind, Turner. The police never let you out of their sight for a minute after your wife was shot. No. We got all we need on you. Regan just brought things to a boil. Oh, thanks, Candid. Thanks a lot. That's how it was. Mike Turner, jealous husband, knocked off two people trying to satisfy her rage. The atomic assassin by mistake, his wife on purpose. The Earl of Gardner was close to being number three. King Cobra got off with a light charge, but Turner was scheduled for the works. When I got to the office the next morning, my boss, Anthony J. Lyon, was reading the morning paper. He looked puzzled. Hey, Jeffrey. Brushing up on the race results, Fatso? No, Jeffrey. I was reading about the Turner case. You know, I simply can't understand it. Mike Turner seemed like such a nice fellow, giving us those passes to the match and all. To throw off suspicion, Fatso. And to have us right next to him in case anything went wrong. Well, I must confess it was clever of you, Jeffrey, to check up on King Cobra's wife. Uh, imagine Turner using the jealous husband routine to inflame King Cobra to attempt murder. Jealous husband's lion? You never know. Now, um... Uh... Take you, for instance. Hmm? You went out to see King Cobra's wife. Yeah, but, Jeffrey, that was business you sent me. Yeah, but suppose King Cobra didn't look at it that way. Suppose he found out you were with his wife. Uh, After the things Mike Turner's been telling him. Well... Jeffrey, no, you, you don't think... It... Just a thought, Fatso? Yeah, but, Jeffrey, it was business, simply business. You sent me out there to see the woman. Yes, and you said she was lovely. Cool green eyes, <laughs> legs, things like that. Get around, Lion. Who knows? Maybe King Cobra's looking for you right now. Well, Jeffrey, you, you, you've got to get me out of this. You, you've got to explain it. It was... It... Yeah. Phone's ringing. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it is. Well, don't you think you ought to answer it, Fatso? Never can tell. It might be business. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Lion Detective Bureau, Anthony J... What? Who? Uh, no, no, he's not in. Uh, no, this is his assistant, Mr. Smith. Anthony J. Smith. Uh, that is John Smith. Uh, no, uh, no, he's gone for the day. He may be gone all week. Uh, yes. Yes, I... I'll tell him when he comes in. Uh, Who was it, Faso? Uh, uh, wrong number, Jeffrey. Oh, really? Sounded like a woman's voice to me, Faso. Anybody I know? Hey, Jeffrey, it... It was Mrs. King Cobra. She called to invite me out to dinner. <laughs> like I said, Fatso, never can tell. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Frug and William Fifield, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy, and stars Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Aron. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard each week at this same time. Bob Stevenson speaking and inviting you to be with us again for more suspense and mystery and adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. <laughs>